What's up, guys? Dr. Andrew Fix back here for another episode on the code. Thank you so much for tuning in, joining us. Um, sort of lost what I was going to say there because uh, I'm sitting in a different environment here today. Um, I'm in a different chair. I'm in a different room in our house. Um, you may have heard me say this on a different episode, but my wife, Erin, and I, we've got a little one on the way. A um, little less than halfway through this pregnancy, she is, and we are. And um, in March, we're going to have a little baby boy in this house. So we're reorganizing some things, reorganizing a room. So the desk and the podcast area kind of got moved around. So um, not that you see a whole lot different if you're watching this on video. We've got, um, you know, white walls and white doors, and here we are. So I appreciate you guys tuning in to uh, listen to this episode uh, we'll keep this one relatively short and sweet. However, I want you to, you know, think about this. And then the next time you to, you go eat a meal, you know, be mindful of this. And we're going to talk about the difference between mindful eating and intuitive eating or eating intuitively. Um, so how this idea came up is I had seen an email come across today through my inbox from a, a functional medicine coaching practice. Um, or a network called Live Nourished. And, um, you know, you'll probably hear another one of um, a podcast with that title and topic. Um, their owner and founder, Hallie Brooks, she's, um, she's got some great stuff. I definitely recommend their newsletter if you're not subscribed to it. So go check that out when you do listen to that episode. But, um, but they had an email that came across today on that topic. Like, what's the difference between mindful eating and intuitive eating? And I kind of want to just summarize that and then take it one step further of how, how I sort of talk about that with some of our clients and, um, and, you know, what we've used those words and phrases for before. So, um, let's just jump right into it. So I think in, in today's culture, right, it's 2023 closing in on 2024. Uh, we do so much stuff digitally. We have phones, computers in our hands, in our pocket all the time. And we're constantly on the go, right? We're just going, going, going from one thing to the next. And, um, you know, if you're like me, some one of the things that I'm working on is continuing to be present and be in the moment with what I'm doing and not trying to have like 10 different things rolling through my head all at one time. And, um, and that's kind of what this topic made me think about because that's exactly what mindfully eating means. Being mindful while you are eating it means being present in the moment, being present with the food that you're consuming and like savoring that and taking your time to chew it, to eat it, to be aware of the senses that you're experiencing. Like what's the smell? What's the texture? What's the taste like? You know, what does the food look like? And you're, you're doing that without the distractions, right? You're doing that being present in the moment. You're not scrolling on your phone you're not watching television, watching Netflix or or sports or whatever. You're you're literally just in the moment, not in a rush, like not on the go, on the go, got to eat this really fast. You're being mindful and you're being aware while you're eating. And and that's basically it right there. And I think if you were to do nothing else and you were trying to make some changes in your nutrition and your, you know, your lifestyle, if you were to do nothing else besides try to minimize the distractions while you are eating and eat your meals, not skipping them and just be present, sit down or stand, whatever you want. Just eat your meal and be in the moment while you're doing it and chew your food and enjoy it. Um, man, that's going to, that's going to do a lot for you. That's going to do a lot for your mental health. Probably that's going to do a lot, uh, make some changes potentially for your nutrition. So sometimes when people eat this way, they naturally will change the way that they eat. Meaning, for example, they will eat less because they're taking their time. They're in the moment. They're being present. They're not distracted by their phone or the TV. And then they'll start to feel and notice, huh, I'm starting to feel full. Uh, I think I'll stop now, even though I didn't quite finish everything that was on my plate. I'll package that up, put it in the refrigerator, and I'll maybe eat that later or I'll eat that tomorrow. And um, And that's just one of the small things that being mindful when we eat can do for us aside from all the potential psychological and mental health benefits that can come from that and, you know, reducing our stress level, having some time to literally just think, sit and think, um, 
I was going to say, you know, think and digest, not digesting the food necessarily, but like digesting our thoughts and and thinking about things that are coming to mind instead of constantly being rushed and constantly being on the go. Um, so the next time that you sit down to eat, see if you can do that. See if you can, you know, put the phone down, turn it on silent. Don't turn the television on. If you're with someone else, just be present with them, have that conversation. And, um, and if you're not, if you're by yourself, that's fine too. But just like sit there, connect in the moment, you know, notice what the chair that you're sitting in feels like, notice what the food tastes like, and just be present without the distractions. And that's the gist of mindful eating. So how is that different or the same as intuitive eating? And I took a couple of little notes here. Intuitive eating, well, both of these things, intuitive eating, mindful eating, mindful eating kind of come from, um, you know, part of where they came from is there's a lot of people that struggle with disordered eating and or eating disorders, like, you know, disorders of how we feel about the food, our mindset around food, how we feel like the food is impacting us, body image and all, all of these things, right? So um, that's where these kind of items came from. And Intuitive eating has a lot more to do with like discarding or or not playing into the diet culture that we have and feeling any certain type of way about, uh, you know, about what you should be eating or feeling bad about about things, um, you know, respecting the body that you have and the fact that you need to nourish it and honoring the fact that you're hungry and that you have an appetite and you're like listening to what your body's telling you. My body's telling me I'm hungry. So intuitively, I know I should probably eat. I'm going to eat, right? And not and not worrying about like in the moment necessarily what you're eating, even though we want to make healthy choices that are going to nourish our body. Um, but that's, you know, that's besides the point with intuitive eating. We're, we're just listening to the senses and the feelings of what our mind and body are telling us. Right. And that's a little bit different to mindful eating and being present and aware while you're eating. This has much more to do with like my body's giving me signals of something that I need. So I'm going to honor that and I'm going to do it. Right. I'm not going to worry about the fact that, you know, when I look in the mirror, I feel like I look a certain way and I feel guilty or shame about eating as a result of that. Or I feel like I need to gain weight or lose weight. Um, it just has to do with, intuitively sensing what our body needs and we're going to give it that. Okay. Um, and if you were to search this online, that's basically what you're going to find a subtle difference with a lot of overlap between these kind of topics of mindful eating, intuitively eating. And, um, you know, you could kind of imagine if there's like a Venn diagram or something, there's some differences. There's a lot of similarities. Oops. And, um, another way that I've sort of talked about this with people, um, has less to do with, you know, body image and disordered eating, but it has everything to do with um, being aware of and intuitively having idea, having an idea of what you're putting in your body. And I guess what I mean by that is, um, though this is not the definition, this is how I've kind of used this in practice. Say, for example, you have someone that's following a nutrition plan or a guideline, and they are trying to um, gain weight or lose weight, right? Maybe they're training for a uh, a fitness competition, for example, bodybuilding or, or something, or they're literally just trying to choose, lose weight. And they're working with a coach and um, they're following a specific plan. They're trying to hit a certain amount of protein, carbohydrates, and fat throughout the day. They're trying to get a certain amount of water and fluids in, and they're trying to, uh, work out and exercise a certain way. And they're tracking their food. They're, they're tracking the quality of the things that they're putting in their body. And of course the caloric impact that those have, um, and for a while, somebody may really benefit from being actively tracking this, like putting things in an app, putting things in a website, and knowing knowing what caloric impact certain food choices have. But after a while, someone measuring, weighing, or measuring out with measuring cups and things, um, the food that they're eating, after a while, they can start to do this a little bit more intuitively, where instead of having to measure out a portion of meat or or uh, rice or potatoes or, or vegetables or whatever it might be, 
to know exactly how much that is, what the serving size is, because they've done it so many times, they can kind of just look at it and have a fairly accurate estimate of, oh, that's approximately four ounces of chicken or ground beef or or whatever that might be. Oh, that's approximately one cup of rice um, without really having to like get specific to measuring it. And that's another way that you can kind of use this intuitive eating mindset to, uh, you know, go about your day and make healthy choices without having to, sometimes people will feel like tracking things and measuring things can feel very restrictive or can feel very mm, hindering to their enjoyment of just eating and the process. And I would say that comes probably way more down to the mindful eating side of things, enjoying what you're doing and enjoying the food and savoring the food because you're being present in the moment probably has a lot more to do with, with that than the fact that you're measuring it and portioning it out. Measuring it and portioning it out just has a lot more to do with, you know, how much are you eating relative to the amount of food that you actually need for your body and your lifestyle and fitness and training goals. Um, so, you know, hopefully you took something away from this. Um, and the next time that you sit down for a meal, you can think about being mindful. And if you've never done that before, it might feel like a big shock. You might be bored. You might, you might be so used to being distracted and on the go that, um, that that's hard to do, but I would encourage you to lean into that discomfort and that, um, lean into that pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and and see if you can't do that for a few days and just see what you notice. Maybe you know, notice something um, different. Maybe you have some time to think and you have some creative ideas that come to mind. Maybe you realize how much you enjoy a certain food that um, that you hadn't noticed before because your mind was on something else. And then if you've never done any form of food tracking or food measuring, um, man, I think that would be a great exercise for almost anybody to go through at some point in their life, just to improve your awareness of portion sizes and, and knowing what you're putting in your body. Right. And what I'm definitely not doing is advocating for like, everyone needs to track every little thing that goes in their body. I don't necessarily think that's healthy either. I think there's a very happy medium, right. And living in the, in the medium or moderate section is probably good in a lot of respects, than being too far on one end of the spectrum or the other. But um, but being able to look at some food and have even a remotely close estimate of, you know, how many grams, how many pounds or, or whatever, how many grams of something is that? How many ounces of something is that? What kind of a serving am I, am I even looking at? Um, because a lot of times we have no clue. We go to a restaurant, we get a serving that might be, two or three times what, what we thought it was. It might have double or triple the amount of calories that we thought it was. And depending on your goals and your lifestyle, that might be fine, but that may or may not be helping you achieve those goals. So just something to think about. Um, you know, I think food scales are a very, the one of the more accurate and um, relatively inexpensive way to do this. Probably the most accurate way to do it, even more so than measuring cups and all that, um, because the weight is what it is. And um and they have a lot of different settings on there. So if you've not tried one, I'd recommend you do it. And um, the next time that you go eat a meal, try to be mindful and try to be present and see what you notice. So uh, I'm going to go do that right now. I'm going to go catch a little bit bit of dinner with my wife and we'll turn the phone off and um, we'll do some mindful eating. I appreciate you guys hopping in here on the code. Um, hopefully this was useful. And um, you know, if you've listened to this show before, you've heard me say this, we are trying to increase our reviews on this podcast, trying to get up to 200 five-star reviews. So if you've not left one yet, whatever platform you're using, I would really appreciate that. Our team would really appreciate that. And um, and hopefully we can keep more and more episodes coming out on topics that you guys find value in. And, um, and we'll catch you next time on another episode of The Code. Have a good night, guys. Bye-bye.